What's up? And welcome to another episode of Evie's Review. So on today's episode, I'm going to be testing out my latest invention, the corn bed. So what this is, it's an LCC chip. That's a J-Leg chip mounted on a little tiny custom circuit board. And it's got jumpers that can configure up to eight different settings for which ROM to use. So as you can see in this little table here, I've got the basic ROM, the character ROM, as well as six different kernels. So I'm gonna try out the kernels today. So this is the original kernel in the machine. This machine happens to have a socketed kernel already, so it's a great guinea pig. So I'm gonna turn the machine off, get my trusty chip puller, because I don't wanna bend the legs of this chip. Get it on there nice and sturdy. And once it's in the right position, you can just press to lift. And that looks like it came out nice and cleanly with no bent legs, that's good. So I got my corn bed, and I'm gonna put this not on the first setting, but on the second jumper setting. It's 001 binary, so I'll pop that in there. Get it nice and firmly in the socket. And then I'll turn the machine on, and I'll see, look, back bit detected kernel version one. So that definitely worked. And then I'm gonna change the jumpers to 010. Let's give it a shot. Kernel V2, yay! All right, and then kernel V3, which is gonna be the same as what I had in there before. Give that a shot. Kernel V3, yay! Okay, so the other fun ones, the next one is the SX kernel. That's a fun one. So that's gonna be 100. So this should be an SX kernel. Ah, V3E, so E is for executive, so that's correct. And I wanna see what it looks like without the back bit cartridge. Check it out, it's an SX kernel, wow! All right, and then another cool one is the GS kernel. So that should be the GS kernel. Wow, look, it's a Commodore 64 game system. That's amazing. And then last but not least is my proprietary backbit kernel. I don't know if this is gonna work. I just made it willy nilly. Turn this baby on. It still thinks it's kernel V3, but what happens if I take the backbit cartridge out? Something's a little fishy there. I think I know what's going on here. I got rid of the part where it sets the vectors, but the problem is you need to set the vectors once just to get started. So I'm gonna go ahead and close up this machine. This is my best machine. This is the one I use most of the time, so I don't like to do too much work on it. All right, so now I'm gonna see if I have a machine that has a socketed basic or character ROM to test the corn bit, if the basic and character ROM work on there. This is my prized PAL conversion machine. I took an NTSC machine and I found a PAL video chip and crystal and I swapped those out. All right, so this machine, wow, look, everything socket on here. So I'm gonna turn the machine on. All right, and we can see this is a nice working PAL machine. So now I'm going to pull out the basic ROM to see if I can substitute corn bit as a basic ROM. So I'm going to set it to 000, which is the basic ROM, and I'm going to carefully pull out this basic ROM chip, get it on there nice and steady, pull it straight up, drop it down, and you can see there's no bed pins, which is very good. I'm gonna put my corn bit, configure it as a basic ROM, into the socket. Okay, give it a shot. All right, well, it looks like it's working. So just for comparison, let's see what would happen if I put it in there without a basic ROM. Let me just put a different ROM in there. So this is gonna be 001. This is actually a kernel ROM in the basic ROM slot. And you can see that obviously doesn't work. So I'll put it back to the basic ROM. Okay, 
and you can see that it's happy. Let me type a basic program in. There, hello. So I'll put the original basic ROM back in there. All right, now I'm gonna play with the character ROM. Ooh. So if I pull the character ROM out, out just fine. And then if I turn the machine on without a character on, ooh, so I get this weird distortion pattern if there's no character on. So I'll put the corn bit with the character on. And what's interesting is that the character on is actually a 4K ROM, not an 8K ROM. But on the corn bit, I just give it the same 4K twice because the chip pins are pretty much the same otherwise. And there's just one pin that's an address pin on the 8K chip that ends up being a chip enable pin on the 4K chip. So if I put two copies of the 4K, I don't even care which one it accesses, but I know it'll work. So I'll put this as a character ROM and I'll pop it in there and see what happens. All right, this is with the corn bit character ROM. And the machine works. Look, it's got all the characters on there. And just for fun, what would happen if, let's say I put a basic ROM where it should have been a character ROM. Probably just gonna have some really weird looking characters. So this is with a basic ROM in the character ROM. Yep, it's just a kind of an eyesore. It doesn't look like characters. But you can see there's something going on there. So then I'll put it back. All right now it's the character ROM again. Looks great. So I made a new corn bit. If you can see, old corn bit, new corn bit. And this has a specially refined back bit kernel. But first, I'm gonna show you with the standard kernel. So if you look at my little chart here, these are the jumper settings for my new corn bit. So to get V3 kernel, that's the standard kernel, 010. I'll set these jumpers, pop it in. Make sure the machine's off while you do this. I'll turn on the machine. This is the game Odell Lake using the regular kernel. All right, so it's loading, loading, loading. This is a really slow loading program because it happens to be written in basic and basic's just really slow period. Okay, check it out. Device not present error. So that is the problem that this game has on Backbit. It resets the kernel vectors and then it can't talk to Backbit anymore. So the Backbit kernel, I literally changed one byte in the kernel and now the Backbit kernel will skip the overriding of the kernel vectors. So check it out. All I have to do is change the jumper from 010 to 011. And we'll put this back together here. And so I'm gonna try to run Odell Lake again. Oh, look at that, loading Odell Lake. So that means it got to the final stage of the loading. And if you think this is slow, the original loading time is about three minutes for this game. All right, there's Odell Lake. Let's have some fun. They got a little bird on the logo there. You will take the role of a fish. Let's not and say we did. Wait, what if I am rainbow? As a rainbow trout, you will look like this. A 
Ooh, what do I want to do? I'm gonna eat it. A Dolly Varden. It's almost like a Dolly Parton. So, it says you attempt to eat it, and you would think you could like use the joystick, but I don't think this is that kind of game. It's not really an action game, it's more like a, a gambling game. It says, what would you like to play? And then it just does it for you. Oh, it looks like it's gonna eat it! Oh! It, it, it ate me? Unhappily, yeah. It ate me. Oh well. Well, that's a good lesson in ecology. No, I don't want to be humiliated again. And it puts me back into basic? Really? That's the punishment I get? Now, one other nifty feature of the backbit kernel is that even when you remove the backbit cartridge, you turn your machine on, and look, it says backbit. So, just so you know that you got the corn bit in there. I mean, maybe it should say corn bit. Now when I put in the original kernel, it goes in almost too easily. And there's two reasons for that. One, these big square pins can damage the socket, but actually when they're this short, they don't damage it that much. But uh, I made a version of the corn bit where I put these pins the wrong way so the legs were really long and that definitely damages the socket. But to prevent any small amount of damage that might happen from these square pins, because these sockets are really not designed for those big pins. You want pins that more closely resemble these kind of pins, these smaller pins. But what you can do actually, if you think you destroyed your sockets, you can take some tweezers and you can just push these guys back a little bit more closed and it'll at least be a decent quick fix. The sockets will still be a little bit loose. And so for that reason, I decided to bite the bullet and order some so-called round machine pins from China. The only downside of the machine pins is that they can break much easier than these pins, but the upside is they won't destroy your sockets, and that's a pretty good upside. It just means you have to be a little more delicate with your corn bit. But the good news is that the corn bit 1.0 is definitely a success. It functions as three kinds of ROM chips, so it's a great low-cost replacement, and I'll probably be selling those as soon as I figure out what to do with the configuration. So I guess that's about it for this little experiment today. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video and tune back in real soon for another episode of Evie's Review.